More than 4 billion people live across this vast continent called Asia. And we are telling their stories. On this edition, Indonesia's giant palm oil industry. Blamed for the massive deforestation on Borneo, the largest island not just in Indonesia, but also Asia. And this species of turtle has existed before the dawn of mankind, but it is now on the verge of extinction. I'm Sulkina Aluwalia, and this is Assignment Asia. Welcome to the program. The palm oil industry may have brought new wealth to Indonesia and neighboring Malaysia, but not everyone is enjoying the resulting prosperity. Indigenous communities have taken a stand against what they believe are injustices brought about by developers and the state. The public protests and demonstrations they've staged against palm oil plantations have often resulted in violence and police brutality. This is now a rare sight in the Indonesian part of Borneo. Thick rainforests and lush greenery once covered large areas of the island. Today, almost half of these forests are gone. Indonesia's giant palm oil industry has been blamed for the island's massive deforestation. One of the top drivers of the country's economy, it's worth billions of dollars and employs nearly six million people. The industry has surpassed the oil and gas sectors in foreign exchange revenues. Our shampoos, soaps, and even the food we eat, palm oil is a staple ingredient in at least 50% of all supermarket foods. Indonesia is the largest producer of palm oil, producing 35 million tons a year. The demand is huge in countries like India and China because it still remains the most efficient source of vegetable oil. The demand for palm oil to feed the world continues to increase each year. But meeting that huge demand also poses a threat to forests and peatlands, especially those in Borneo and Sumatra, which accounts for 96% of palm oil production in Indonesia. It's the way palm oil is produced that's causing concerns among environmentalists. The age-old method is known as slash and burn, Large corporations set fire to millions of hectares of rainforests to plant palm oil crops. It's the cheapest and easiest technique to clear patches of land for plantations, but it's also the most dangerous. Kalau kita bicara gambut di Kalbar itu luas gambutnya itu ada kurang lebih 1,7 juta hektar. Ini adalah kurang lebih 30 persen dari luas gambut di Indonesia. Dan saat ini hampir 60 persen dari 1,7 itu kemudian sudah dikonversi menjadi perkebunan kelapa sawit. Ya. Dan data kami menyebut bahwa ada kurang lebih 800 ribu hektar lahan gambut sekarang yang berada di dalam konsesi-konsesi perkebunan. Jadi ini adalah persoalan serius ya. Persoalan serius kenapa? Karena kalau kita bicara gambut ini adalah habitat satwa-satwa langka. Kita tahu orang hutan hidup di wilayah-wilayah gambut yang kemudian kondisi hari ini dengan kerusakan gambut dengan dikonversi menjadi perkebunan hampir sebagian orang-orang hutan itu kemudian kehilangan rumahnya dan kemudian masuk ke wilayah-wilayah kelola penduduk gitu ya masuk ke kampung-kampung ditangkap dibunuh oleh masyarakat. Nah saya kira ini adalah persoalan yang serius terkait dengan apa e, tidak adanya respek tidak adanya perlindungan. Ya, dalam konteks regulasi di level apa, provinsi kami di Kalimantan Barat ini untuk melindungi habitat dan satwa-satwa langka itu. When companies cut down vegetation and set fire to peatlands, it becomes extremely difficult to control. Peatlands contain 10 times more carbon than normal forests, as they are made up of layers of dead and decomposing plants. When companies use the slash and burn method to clear peatlands, all those stored carbon is released into the air, creating toxic fires that are impossible to put out. Persoalan utama di Kalbar adalah kebakaran hutan dan lahan. Jadi ketika bicara soal kebakaran, kebakaran lahan gambut ini menimbulkan persoalan yang sangat serius, asap yang sangat banyak, 
dan kemudian dalam konteks pergaulan internasional juga membuat malu bangsa begitu karena asapnya sampai ke Malaysia sampai ke Singapura yang kemudian uh, dalam konteks penegakan hukum bagi perusahaan-perusahaan yang melakukan pembakaran lahannya melakukan land clearing dengan cara membakar itu sampai hari ini tidak berjalan dengan optimal jadi uh, uh, singkatnya bagi kami perusakan wilayah-wilayah gambut itu kemudian erat kok Orang korelasinya dengan tidak adanya niat baik pemerintah melakukan penegakan hukum gitu ya, memastikan agar kemudian perusahaan-perusahaan yang ada di Kalbar yang memiliki wilayah gambut itu kemudian bisa memperlakukan wilayah gambut itu sebagaimana yang harus dilakukan sesuai dengan regulasi yang ada itu. The West Kalimantan government has begun to enforce stricter rules. It is now mandatory for companies to protect peatlands under the Green Growth Plan an initiative that aims to increase social resilience, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, balance ecosystems at the local level, and provide environmental services. Outside the government, some individuals are doing their share. Suratno has been a farmer all his life, following in his father's footsteps. These palm oil plantations are his source of living. In recent years, new government policies tackling the negative impact of palm oil farming has taken a serious toll on his income. So he decided to work with environmental organizations and local governments to encourage farmers to practice sustainable palm oil farming. Today, he's an independent farmer and founder of Rimba Harapan, meaning hope for the forest, which advocates sustainable agricultural practices. Di awalnya itu, masalahnya itu adalah kita belum mengetahui bagaimana teknis pengelolaan sawit. E, sebagian besar, termasuk saya, petani, e, itu melakukan perlakuan yang tidak semestinya yang kita lakukan karena sawit itu adalah eh, pendapatan yang harus kita rawat sebaik mungkin eh, masalah yang selama ini yang selama ini belum benar-benar kita paham akhirnya ada eh, apa sedikit pengalaman kemana dari teman-teman NJO memberi pengertian memberi pendidikan tata kelola kebun yang baik itulah akhirnya kita mengerti bagaimana kita merawat sawit Suratno owns forest land in Sintang district on the western edge of Borneo some of these lands are used for palm oil plantations while others are protected for wildlife Suratno says that's important to him and his foundation Unlike many large corporations, he and his group of local farmers do not use the slash and burn technique. Their method is entirely manual, using equipment like axes and shovels to clear the land, keeping in mind the areas that should remain untouched. Suratno uses organic materials, such as cuts of wood and deciduous leaves as fertilizers. Shrubs like weeds usually die in other palm oil plantations because of the heavy use of pesticides. In Suratno's farms, those same weeds are used to keep the soil moist. Dengan tata apa kelola kebun yang baik, kita akan melindungi alam kita tercemar dari segala aspek seperti kimia, yaitu uh, kalau panas kekeringan lahan, kalau apa namanya sawitnya itu posisinya perlu air tidak perlu apa namanya bingung kita harus nyiram karena apa cara otomatis dengan adanya tutupan pelepah dengan semak atau rumput yang kita pelihara seperti ini itu akan membantu kita untuk mempertahankan kelembapan tanah yaitu ini sebagai cover crop atau e, sebagai mulsa seperti ini nah. Sebenarnya inilah teknik yang sebenarnya karena apa? Dengan begini kita membantu pemerintah untuk e, menjaga lingkungan. Suratno also implements intercropping, locally known as tumpang sari, which involves planting other crops on palm oil land before the palm trees mature or begin bearing fruit. This way the land is not wasted. 
Recognizing the challenges facing Indonesia's palm oil industry, Muhammad Munawir leads WWF Indonesia's Green Palm Plantation Program, which supports Suratno's foundation. He works closely with local farmers to promote safe land clearing and teaches them the importance of caring for the environment. Through the program, manufacturers can support sustainable palm oil production at its source, enabling small-scale farmers to earn more by using sustainable farming methods. Kami mencoba untuk melalui tata kelola kelembagaan kita coba develop itu. Kemudian pada dua tahun 2014 kemarin di kawan-kawan petani yang menyepakati untuk membentuk sebuah kelembagaan yang mereka sebut sebagai uh, koperasi, koperasi produksi limbah harapan. Nah kami coba coba perkuat koperasi produksi ini dengan berbagai program atau kegiatan diantaranya yang terpenting adalah peningkatan kapasitas ya bagaimana membangun sebuah koperasi yang yang baik, koperasi yang standar sesuai dengan persyaratan pemerintah misalnya. Dari ketengahlah pelatihan-pelatihan tentang manajemen koperasi seperti apa, kemudian dasar-dasar manajemen kelompok, kemudian administrasi keuangan dan non keuangan dan segala macam nah, itu yang yang coba kita bantu teman-teman. Already the world's largest palm oil exporter, Indonesia plans to increase production to more than 40 million tons by 2020. That is likely to drive up demand for the commodity making sustainable farming all the more important. Working with the government, Munawir wants to help smallholders increase their productivity without destroying forests or peatlands. The local government, meanwhile, vows to subject large corporations to more stringent standards. Untuk perizinan kelapa sawit, ini saya ceritakan yang sekarang ini. Prosesnya bahwa Mereka harus mendapatkan izin perkebunan kelapa sawit dari bupati, kepala daerah setempat. Setelah mereka mendapatkan izin usaha perkebunan kelapa sawit, maka sebelum mereka melaksanakan kegiatannya, mereka harus didahulukan dengan rencana lingkungan dalam pengelolaan kelapa sawit. Yang kita kenal dengan mereka harus membuat suatu dokumen yang kita kena dokumen lingkungan. Dokumen lingkungan itu ada dokumen analisis mengenai dampak lingkungan, ada analis, ada juga dokumen upaya pengelolaan lingkungan dan upaya perencanaan lingkungan. Jadi ada dua dokumen, tergantung besar kecilnya dari luas lahan yang akan dikelola. Dokumen lingkungan itu harus susun untuk mengantisipasi terjadinya kerusakan dan pencemaran akibat kegiatan daripada kelapa sawit. As the industry keeps expanding, new regulations are crucial to protecting rainforests and compelling companies to take responsibility for their actions. But in his own way, Suratno is already setting a good example to other farmers, proving that it's possible to get environmental organizations, palm oil producers, and other stakeholders to work together to protect the environment. Despite efforts to protect the environment, a recent report revealed that palm oil sourced from illegally cleared rainforests in Indonesia continues to find its way into consumer products. The issued by Eyes on the Forest, a coalition of environmental NGOs, has prompted many multinational companies to pledge to do more, to increase traceability in the palm oil supply chain a much-needed effort before even larger swathes of habitat areas for rhinos, tigers, and orangutans continue to be wiped out. Next on Assignment Asia. Is there a way to strike a balance between tourism and conservation? Stories of Hope triumph, innovation, and change. We uncover the truth and go great lengths to tell a story. Get to know ordinary people with extraordinary stories and see Asia 
from an Asian perspective. This is Assignment Asia. Expect the unexpected. The unspoiled beaches and crystal clear waters of Istuzu along Turkey's Dalian Delta attract thousands of tourists every year. Visitors are eager to meander through the maze of river channels and lagoons that camouflage the ruins of a 2,500-year-old city built by the ancient Lycians. But as Natalie Carney found out, increase in tourist arrivals have posed a threat to the survival of what's known as the loggerhead turtles. In this cozy little town nestled inland along Turkey's southwest Mediterranean coast, where a river flows along cliffs carved with ancient tombs, a species of turtle has existed even before the dawn of mankind. Today, the loggerhead turtle, known in Turkish as Kareta Kareta, is a tourist attraction in the town of Dalian. Zaten gelen turistlerin yüzde 90'ı kaplumbağayı görmeye geliyor. Kaplıcalar birçok yerde var. Antik kent birçok yerde var. Dalyan'ın en büyük özelliği kaplumbağalarımız. But this species is now endangered. Riverboats connect Dalian Harbor with Itsuzu Beach, a picturesque five-kilometer stretch of flawless white sand lapped by the waves of the Mediterranean Sea. During the day, a sun lover's dream, but at night, the nesting place for the Careta Careta. These winding canals of bulrushes and pampas grass are home to no less than three varieties of turtles. Kaptan olarak kaplumbağaların önemi. Kaplumbağa bir şans olarak hani görünüyor. Günde 5-10 defa da hani 20 defa da görebilirsin ama biraz şans yani her zaman görünmeye de bilir. En çok sabahları erken saatlerde gelen kişiler daha fazla kaplumbağa görme şansı. Come here, come here. There's one here. We were in luck. Turtles have been around this part of Turkey for thousands of years. Yet according to recent research, there's only about 60,000 female loggerhead turtles left in the world. But half of those are said to be here along Turkey's Mediterranean coast. Unlike other sea turtles, the kareta kareta are meat eaters. But they don't have teeth. They use their strong beaks to chew up lobsters, crabs, and shellfish. These turtles can hold their breath for up to six hours and rarely leave the water. Only pregnant females come to shore when it's time to lay their eggs. And they do so on Itsuzu Beach. I describe it, the beach of Dalian, as one of the most fabulous things I had ever seen and that I would like to throw myself upon it and embrace it like a lover. June Haimov, known here as Captain June, first experienced Itsuzu Beach more than 40 years ago as a sailor from England. Here, she witnessed what she now describes as a life-changing event. One night, I came across a large lump on the sand in the night, in semi-darkness. Knew it couldn't be a rock. Looked, and it was a turtle. I lay down on the sand and watched her for perhaps an hour. Saw her with her flippers make her nest, make the uh, depression where she would put the eggs, eventually lay about a hundred eggs, cover everything very neatly, and rather tired, giving what sounded like a sigh, she rose up and walked back into the sea. And as I watched the water close over her back, my life changed. I knew that I had to do something uh, to protect these creatures. Captain June became one of the area's pioneering conservationists. She petitioned the country's capital to save Itsuzu Beach from development that could have disrupted the turtle's habitat. In 1988, the beach was declared a specially protected area, Turkey's first. Thanks to Captain June's efforts, Itsuzu Beach continues to be an important nesting ground for the Kareta Kareta, which are thought to have roamed the earth with dinosaurs more than 100 million years ago. Geçmiş olarak dinozorlardan sonra karetalar gelir. Bu da normalde kara kaplumbağası. 
evrim e, dinozorlardan kaçarak e, denize sığınıyorlar ve zamanla orada evrim geçirerek deniz kaplumbağası oluyorlar. Today, loggerhead sea turtles are classified as an endangered species by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Despite tourism's economic benefits, Captain June says it has disturbed the turtles' natural lifestyle. It has caused great suffering to the turtles. Many have died, many have been injured, and many don't go back anymore. They don't migrate anymore. They stay in the river, hoping for food. Looking. But many die in the river because of exposure to cold water from the mountains during winter. Others are injured by riverboat propellers. Nasıl bir tehlikesi var? E, açıkçası sonuç olarak biz insanlar bunların sebebi. E, yanlış avlanma, balıkçıların özellikle yaptıkları ve turist e, rehberlerin gösterdikleri işte yanlışlıkla besleme yaparak turistlere gösterme şekli. Bu sebeplerden dolayı yaralanmalar meydana geliyor. Tekne pervaneleri o şekil sıralayabiliriz açıkçası. Evet, balık ağları, misineler, kancalar. Şenol Menzek has dedicated his life to protecting these turtles. He heads the Dekamer Project, a sea turtle research, rescue and rehabilitation center. Dekamer adı üzerinde, yani kısacası kaplumbağa hastanesi. Burada yaralı gelen kaplumbağalarımızın genel tetkikleri, yani kan tahlili olsun, rotgen film çekimi olsun, Rahatsızlıklarını tespit edip operasyonlara başlıyoruz. Tabi bunların e, tedavisi biz insanlardaki gibi 3-5 gün ya da 5-10 gün süre içinde değil. En kısa 5-6 ay bazen 4 yılı bulabiliyor tedavi süreleri. Burada tedavisi bittikten sonra e, tekrar kaplumbağalarımızı denize, doğal ortamına bırakıyoruz. Supported by Pamukkale University and public donations, trained volunteers work and live with sea turtles here at Dekamer. Besides treating wounded turtles, they educate the public about protecting the species. Hundreds of visitors visit the center each year. So tell us about this turtle. Uh, she is Bilge. Uh, there was a uh, skull crack and that's why we put weight one side mm -hmm. uh, of her shell. Mm -hmm. So she can uh, swim in a straight way and uh, it also helps a little uh, to help her dive because she also has a diving problem and uh, there's gas in her digestive system. Oh. So if we release her to the wild right now, she can't survive alone because mm. she can't dive, uh, so she can't hunt alone in the wild. In addition to the six recuperation tanks, the center has two deep dive tanks for turtles to practice their diving skills. She seems to be quite active though, and she keeps hitting her head against the side of yes. the tub. Why is that? She's exercising, actually. She's, she's trying to dive, and she nearly became an adult, mm. and uh, she's trying to mate. Uh, that's why she's uh, that much active these days. So how long has she been here and what are your predictions about her survival rate? Uh, she has been here almost three years. Wow. Uh, she has been here for, for the longest compared to or other turtles. We hope she will get better soon. In our past experiences, sometimes turtles uh, become healthy mm -hmm. suddenly. Yeah. And we experience things like that, and there's hope for her to. Volunteers at the center focus on protecting the next generation of Kareta Kareta. Their mission starts after nightfall. So it's 2.30 in the morning, and we've been basically scouring this beach since sunset. This is what they do every night, all throughout the night, trying to find fresh nests. Islak kumdan yürüyoruz. Hem e, izleri daha rahat bulmak açısından hem de sert olduğu için. Devam edelim. It's crucial that they do find the fresh nests and protect them before these new eggs become prey. They also say that after rainfall provides the best conditions for the mother turtle, the sand and the air are at their coolest. So this could be a very interesting evening. Gel git olayına bakıyor. E, havanın durumu kum sıcaklığı ayın dolunay olduğu zamanlarda dolunaylarda genelde daha çok çıkarlar. E, tabii ki bu ortam e, alanın karanlık, daha sessiz olması bunlardaki en başka 
etkenler açıkçası. Burada da var, buradan daha net, buradan alalım. Moments later, the group spots the distinctive sand markings of a sea turtle emerging from the water. Pregnant mother turtles return to the same beach where they themselves hatched in order to lay their eggs when they reach maturity. In some cases, swimming thousands of kilometers. A mother turtle pulls herself 20 to 30 meters onto the sandy beach until she finds a suitable place for her nest. She then uses her back flippers to dig a hole for laying eggs. The team marks off a protective area around the nest. Evet. Burada da şu an yumurtanın yerini, yerini tespit edeceğiz. Yani yuvayı tam olarak nereye yaptın? They use a rod to identify recently laid sand, taking care not to puncture any eggs. Önce üzerindeki ıslak kuru kum alıyoruz. Mehmetçim, yardımcı ol. <gülüyor> Yuvanın şekli. Burada Yuvanın şeklini bozmamak amaç yaklaşık olarak gördüğünüz gibi şu çemberin bozulmaması lazım. Yoksa yumurtaların hepsi bozulur. Yavru çıkışı olmaz. Yumurtamız burada. Aa, evet. Between mid-May and October, a female turtle will nest three to five times, laying up to 100 eggs at a time. Geçen sene 628 yuvamız vardı. Hı hı. Yaklaşık 42 bin yavru gönderdik. Burada da aynı şekilde çıkardığımız kendi kumunu koyuyoruz. Nemli kumu. Asla kuru kum koymuyoruz. Burada da yuvanın tam odak noktası. Şu an artık kafesleme işlemi için. A cage is placed over the nesting area to protect the eggs, not only from beach dwellers, but also natural predators. Olarak genelde tilki ve porsuklar zarar veren canlılar. Çünkü... O yumurtayı bıraktığında bir ayrı bir salgısı vardır. O kokuyu tilkiler artık yeri gibi benimsedikleri için bizden önce bazen bulabiliyorlar. Biz o yüzden gece arasında bunu dikkat ediyoruz. Direkt en kısa sürede yuvayı tespit edip koruma altına almak amacımız. Unfortunately, only a small percentage of these eggs will survive. Those that do will hatch roughly 90 days later. Once out in the world, young turtles use the moon's reflection on the water to crawl along the same path their mother took to reach the sea. Chanel considers protecting turtles a lifelong work. Şu ana kadar 128 tane kaplumbağamızı tedavi edip tekrar denize bıraktık. Geldiğinde yara hal, yaralı halde geldiğinde baktığınızda gerçekten çok üzülüyorsunuz. Ee, yaklaşık bir buçuk iki yıl tedavi süreci ve de tekrardan denize bırakılması o anki mutluluk bambaşka açık. Açıklayamıyorum yani o derece. At 94, June heads the Captain June Sea Turtle Foundation, which devotes itself to educating the public about the turtles and protecting them. If we could persuade the government to say to the boats, you'll get a license if you have a propeller guard on your propeller. I think we would already save quite a lot. We don't want to blame the captains, the boatmen, you know, that they have to earn their living. But our propeller guard, we give it away with our foundation. We install it even without payment. More riverboats in Dalian are equipped with Captain June's free propeller guards. The Turkish government has also made it illegal to feed wild animals, including the turtles of Dalian. Yet the surge of tourists continues to present challenges. The turtle as an object is a great incentive to people to come to Dalian. The people are intrigued. It's in the newspapers, on television, and more. But how can we stop curiosity in our fellow man? Difficult. Yani tüm dünyada da açıkçası koruma altına alınmaya başladı. Sadece dediğim gibi herkesin bilinçli olması, bilinçli hareket ederse. Bu yaralanmalar, ne bileyim ölümler meydana gelmez. While humans continue to threaten the turtles' existence, Dalian's conservationists are hopeful their efforts will one day remove the careta careta off the list of the world's endangered species. For Simon Asia, I'm Natalie Carney in Dalian, Turkey. Loggerhead turtles are named for their large heads that support powerful jaw muscles, allowing them to
to crush hard-shelled prey like sea urchins and clams. There are currently about 20 sites around the world where loggerhead turtles nest and lay their eggs, from which the young turtles then crawl back into the sea. That's all the time we have for this week. I'm Sokina Alawalia in Jakarta, Indonesia. Thanks for watching and join us again on Assignment Asia. Share your thoughts and contribute story ideas for future shows by contacting us on social media.